All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little disclaimer. The comments that are made in this particular song are personal observations, but not necessarily everyone's absolute truth or paradigm. So just for the art of adult conversation and brain food and uh, a conversation piece, here it goes. I have no idea why I decided to do this except I thought it was something that needed to be addressed and I'm just gonna go ahead and say what's on my heart, okay? I often wonder how women must feel nowadays when men see them as nothing but breasts and butts and such, but what I want to discuss is much more deeper than that. I found out after I was single, married, and then single again I never truly appreciated all that the species woman had to offer. There are true intricacies that drive a man crazy. For example, uh, asking your lady what she would like to eat, she says something like, uh, whatever you want. Yeah, right. And then when you say what you want, then she replies, I don't want that. These are the things that women are notorious for, but we neglect them because we men being as dogs, you know. We're not used to having to work for affection, you know. Cats, however, don't just come because you make kissing sounds at them. They don't come near when you say, come here, girl, you know. Women are cats. They'll come to you when they need affection. Call it unfair, but isn't it ironic how we as grown men continue to pursue their approval and attention by literally chasing them instead of actually dating them. I found out recently that dating and courting are two totally different things. Courting is the preliminary engagement and dating is where you find out or discuss the arrangements. It is common knowledge to well-versed adults that we should court each other's best representatives, but on the contrary, I would like to submit that perhaps we should be dating each other's truths. Somehow, something went wrong around 1994 while we were all still blunted off reality and sipping on gin and juice. We started dating the idea of what we had in our minds about the other party, yet all the while never letting the other party know what we truly were expecting of them. Most of us who are divorced at a young age now realize that we married the idea of what we thought marriage was supposed to be, instead of committing to making the marriage actually be what it should be, which is work, work, work. Even children require work, and it's like work to get them here, and work to keep them here, and then work to get them out of your house and into the real world. Before I start to sound a little too preachy on y'all, you know what I mean? Let me please state that I'm, I'm just now courting myself so that I can properly find out how to date. And the first lesson I learned was that the art of conducting oneself as a true gentleman has faded away faster than cross colors and battery powered beepers combined. Secondly, originality is lacking in style and presentation because most men are so afraid of being labeled a metrosexual, a heterosexual male that takes very good care of himself, that they clone themselves into the latest street trends without any sense of how to relate their own style. Many of the clothes that I choose to wear reflect me as an individual, though some men and women may find my inward security and forward fashion risk alarming and even perhaps have them question the very essence of my manhood. But once I realized that I'm all things to all people just at different times, I decided to do me and have the audacity to call it fly. My swagger is pimp, my speech is limp, and uh, limp as controlled in every area. Direct, erect conversation is not very gentlemanlike. Especially considering most men's version of conversation is the equivalent to time spent in foreplay. Foreplay is the conversation that leads to the itinerary being discussed, thought about, and then realized. We shouldn't have to think about baseball to prevent a one-round knockout when we mass-marketed a pay-per-view 12-round extravaganza. Some women prefer the thug type and some prefer intellectual, but I prefer a little bit of both in my clothes and my bi-fashionality. I'm past and I'm present. And as for the future, I'm I'm now.
Sometimes folks just have to catch up Cause Tokyo drinks me All these movements as a gentleman are necessary In order to appeal to the vast array of qualities That all real women, grown women, possess Women want someone to listen to them But they also prefer to be dogged a little bit too So that an argument can arise Which will truly show if a man loves her enough to argue back Women tell us to leave so that we'll stay And women also expect us to understand all of this without training Women want this executed with flawless precision And I think if we as men weren't so lazy and horny We could actually become a little bit more creative In the ways to talk to a woman's mind for hours Without ever having to touch her once This can actually be accomplished With that in mind most men's accent and vocabulary files are so sparse and recessively benign that the truth is they don't know how to talk when you really listen. And when you really listen, you find out they can't talk. No one has challenged them to talk. I mean, more than a couple of drinks, a few shakes, and a dance floor, you know. Off to bed. Just like Adam and Eve, everybody gives Eve a hard time, but it wasn't Eve's fault. This isn't the woman's fault, it's the man's fault. We have to respect them enough that even if their vision or mental capacity is impaired, we should respect them enough to not even think about taking it there, knowing that if she was sober, she would throw up. And that would mean, gentlemen, that the moaning you heard means you actually were just making her sick. I had to challenge myself too, guys, you know, with all the practice I had by myself and all the practice you've had by yourself, you think we have this self-control thing down, right? At least for 72 hours, right? Remember that, wives, every three days, okay? That's another issue that'll be addressed a little bit later. Gentlemen is just what it says. Gentle men. Masculinity under control. Man naturally loves to take charge and real women love for them to take it. So man handle them. The first thing I'm gonna take charge of is responsibility. I'm responsible for my women whether I date them or not. Real gentlemen are made of steel and velvet, stone and silk, and that to me is the epitome of sexy. Okay. The abs and chest receive nominations for best supporting actors, but the focus here should be poise, savvy, and conversation. Gentlemen, realize the importance of first impressions, which happens to be every time you walk into a room. People should feel when you've entered a room, and feel when you've left. And true star power doesn't make it an announcement. The way you shine is from the inside out. And please believe, yo, the grills, yo, I ain't hating, but uh, it's not cool. It's fun. But it's not cool. No one to bust that, no one to ice that, and no one to serve that, and not just one to wax that. Clothes and conversation are always more important than cars and money, and you don't have to be rich to dress fly. I will say that every man needs a classic black tailored suit. A tailored suit should emphasize how comfortable you look in it. If it stiffens you or stifles you, it's wearing you and Clothes need to stay in their place. So should women. So check out the next song, Pride. You understand what I'm saying. No matter how dope your suit is, if the shoes are wrong, everything is wrong. Women are very detail-oriented, but if you pay close attention to detail, she spells it all out for you, and then you can't miss. Unless, of course, she feels like changing her mind about that dress for the 40th time. That's all for now. I will be. No, I am a gentleman's gentleman. You've been wonderful this evening. Thank you for your time and your patience. I hope you're enjoying the album so far. Let's step it up, man. Let's get back in our place. Ladies, he's out there. Don't settle for.